During Legion, it was possible to get legendary items from doing almost any current content at max level. While all of them were powerful, some of them were rather niche use-wise, a fair few of them quite horrible compared to others, so we're going to be going over those ones today. In at number 10, we have the Sentinel's Internal Refuge for leather-wearing classes and the Vigilance Perch for male-wearing classes. These two legendaries did the same thing, although with the flavor of one being a wisp and the other being a spirit owl, and with them both being crafted by leather workers. Legendaries allowed the player to gain a passive movement speed buff by 5% for each enemy they killed, stacking up to 5 times, and lasting for 1 minute. Upon reaching 5 stacks, the player would turn into their travel form while the player was out of combat. Now, there's a few things wrong with this. First off, you couldn't fly without having Pathfinder Part 2. It was just an instant mount. Second, it only gained stacks if you got the killing blow. So if another player got the final hit, you would not get a stack. Third, as this is not a normal mount, anything that would normally despawn upon mounting up, like guardians, bodyguards, or even sometimes pets, would not. Meaning, while flying, they would commonly pull enemies on the ground. And since this form ended if you were put in combat, them pulling or accidentally flying into a flying mob would cause you to fall to your death. Needless to say, other than it being an instant mount, it was worse than any other mount. So literally, the only thing these legendaries had going for them was they could be used while leveling, with them only really acting as stat sticks and combat speed boosts, with anyone else who used them completely ignoring their travel form effects. So great legendaries to start this list off with. And at number 9, we have the Insignia of the Grand Army. This legendary is unique because it was the only legendary that was guaranteed to drop, given to you after completing the quest and Taurus the Burning Throne, the Death of the Titan which required the player to kill Argus the Unmaker, who was the final boss of Antorus the Burning Throat, which is the final boss of the expansion. This legendary increased the powers granted by the Netherlight Crucible, a miniature talent system added in Legion's final patch that gave the player small buffs, like an increased mastery or haste, depending on if the player chose Shadow or the Light Path. The 50% increase in abilities was only slightly noticeable. Like with the temporary 1500 versatility buff, it was only a 3% increase to damage and barely 1.5% less damage taken. So when comparing this ring to other legendaries, it just wasn't as good. Like the Soul of X rings, which were a series of rings for all classes that gave them a specific talent, allowing them to have two rows in one of their talent rows, which was quite unique and had varying powers from spec to spec. The insignia of the Grand Army in particular was really just a stat stick by Blizzard for players who were missing a legendary or two, be it from making a new alt or just returning to the game after being gone a long time. It was not worth using for the average player, since at the point of killing Argus the Unmaker, they would likely already have their best in slot legendary, or close to it, and this ring offered nothing more than an ever so slight buff that was just not worth using, especially as it was heavily RNG dependent on what actual options you had in the Netherlight Crucible. He was a guaranteed legendary for alt who killed him in LFR at the very least. And at number 8, we have Sinidari the Symbiote. This was a leather belt equipable by all leather wearers, and it caused the player to do an additional 30% damage to enemies who were above 90% health, and to cause the player to be healed for 100% of the extra damage that it did. The reason why this belt is on this list is because after an enemy hit less than 90% health, the extra damage bonus just went away. For heavy burst damage specs like Feral Druids, this belt did help their burst potential by a noticeable amount, and pushed a raid boss to sub 90% as fast as possible, such as Odin in Halls of Valor as his fight ended when he reached 80% health. On all other bosses though, this bonus was short lived, especially since most raids lust used potions and had room buffs on pool. The damage bonus was therefore a very short amount of time before permanently disappearing. Originally, the Legendary did not have a heal component to it, but it did do 50% more damage, with patch 7.1.5 changing it to what it is now. There were far better alternatives that leather-wearing classes could use that could give them consistent damage output, like the Soul of the Archdruids for the Ferals, or Dustwalker Footpads for Rogues as examples, and dedicating a Legendary slot that doesn't provide any benefit when an enemy is lower than 90% health was more harmful than helpful as it simply didn't do anything past that point. For example, being literally useless against the final boss in the Eye of Ajara, who starts combat almost dead. Although I guess it could help you one-shot mobs out in the open world if you were doing world quests. And at number 7, we have the Eye of the Twisting Nether Legendary for Shamans. 
This legendary made it so whenever the shaman would attack with fire, frost, or nature abilities, it would give a stacking buff that would increase all their damage by 1.5%, stacking for each of the different kinds of damage dealt. So at maximum stacks, it would increase your damage by 4.5%. Now, normally a shaman would only be able to keep two of the stacks up at a time, because none of the specs really used frost damage very much. But it was possible for an enhancement shaman to get 100% uptime on this buff by using the Hailstorm talent, which caused their frost band ability to add an extra frost damage to their melee attacks. However, generally, taking this talent was a DPS loss, and wasn't really worth taking in order to just have 100% uptime on the Twisty Nether buff, unless they also had the wrist legendary Akainu's Absolute Justice, which incentivized actually using frost band in a DPS situation. The reason why this legendary is on this list is because 4.5% increase in damage is not very noticeable, especially when compared to the other legendaries, like the Uncertain Reminder, which made Bloodlust slash Heroism last 75% longer on shamans, or the Breast Legendary, Smoldering Heart, which gave them a chance per Maelstrom spent to gain Ascendance for 10 seconds and substantially increase their damage. Combined with the Melon's Charged Core, which causes shaman to do 10% more damage if their Crash Lightning hit more than 3 targets, there was no reason to ever use this legendary unless it was the only one you managed to get, or if you wanted to have a fun meme build with Ikuno's Absolute Justice that could put out non-terrible damage. Funnily enough, this legendary originally increased damage by 2% per stack, but was nerfed to 1.5% in patch 7.1.5 when they rebalanced legendaries, to try and counter the small bit of meme potential it had. And at number 6, we have Eco Wraith Creator of Worlds. This legendary, which was only usable by druids, increased their specs passive depending on what spec they were playing. For example, Thick Hide for Guardian, Astral Influence for Balance, Feline Swiftness for Feral, or Ysera's Gift for Restoration. Legendary was considered the worst for the druid class, so much so that Blizzard ended up buffing it from 50% increase to a 75% increase. But even then, the difference that it would offer wasn't that great. Thick Hide was increased from 6% to 10.5%, which, needless to say, was not really worth an entire legendary slot, considering how ridiculously strong some of them were. This was okay for doing high-level Mythic Plus keys, as the damage they could take could get to absurd levels, before Blizzard changed Mythic Plus dungeons anyway. But the Dual Determination legendary was just better, as it gave Survival Instincts one additional charge and made it recharge 15% faster. Even Lufa Wrappings, which increased the damage and radius of their Thrash by 25%. For the other Specs passives, it wasn't much of a bonus either. As for balance, you only gained an additional 3.75 yards on your abilities. However, it did have some use for Feral, which increased their passive movement speed buff from 15% to 26%, which could make Feral Druids go very fast. But with the Feral Druid using the Chateauyon Signet and the Lufa Wrapping Legendary combo, or the Chateauyon Signet and the Soul of the Arch Druid combo, their best in slot legendary duos, there was still no reason to ever use this legendary. Outside of old world content, like Transmog Farming, where it at least saw some use for Feral. And at number 5, we have Narrow Band of Promises. This is a Discipline Priest Legendary that had the ability where, when your Penance damaged an enemy, it also healed all allies affected by your Power Word Barrier. Now, Penance is one of the main damage abilities that Discipline Priests use. On a 9 second cooldown, it deals damage when targeting an enemy, or heals when targeting an ally. And the Disc Priest heals primarily through Atonement, which is a buff that gets applied on everyone that they heal that converts about 50% of all the damage you deal into healing on all targets with that Atonement buff. And Power Word Barrier is a great cooldown, where you throw down a barrier in a location which reduces all damage everyone inside of it takes by 25% for 10 seconds. And since Penance is one of the hardest hitting abilities you had, well outside of the artifact weapon in that expansion, it seems like this legendary does a good job of converting your power word barrier into an actual healing cooldown. But there were a couple of problems with this legendary that kind of made using it useless. For one, there were very few fights in Legion which had the entire raid stacking under the barrier, where you wouldn't even be able to get the full benefit of being able to heal your entire raid with that penance. Also, the heal it did was basically coded internally to act exactly like Atonement. So it was only healing for half of the damage of that penance, and you could only realistically use a single penance during a power word barrier's duration. So this was not a lot of healing, for an item taking up one of your precious few legendary slots. And the ring itself didn't even have haste on it, which was one of the best stats that Disciplined Priest wanted the most. So the main ability it modified 
just wasn't very useful in that expansion, and even in situations in which it was useful, it wasn't as impactful as any other legendary. Although to be fair, the two best legendaries for Dizim Priests were just two generic legendaries. First one being Pride As, which is a generic necklace that just gave you an absorption shield every 30 seconds, which funny enough was seen as the worst legendary at the start of the expansion, but quickly became one of the best for progressions. And Velen's Future Sight, which was a generic healing trinket. Basically, all of the Discipline Priest specific legendaries were just straight up worse than two generic legendaries when it came to raiding environments. So Nero's Band of Promises might not even be the worst of the Priest legendaries, because almost none of them were actually used in competitive environments. This is just one I remember standing out as a legendary that seemed really useful, but in practice was actually very lackluster. And at number 4, we have Fragment of the Betrayer's Prison. This was a Vengeance Demon Hunter exclusive legendary which gave 20% additional leech while their Demon Spikes ability was active. Demon Spikes was a core part of the Vengeance Demon Hunter's rotation, seeing as this was their main way of reducing damage and allowed them to tank even larger groups of enemies while having great sustain and their built-in self-healing. This legendary, however, wasn't as great as Oblivion's Embrace. Their best legendary, which gave them an additional Demon Spikes and Empowered War Charge. Archimonde's Hatred Reborn was also one of their best legendaries, funnily enough, which was also a generic tank trinket. And when used, it gave them an Absorb Shield for 30% of their health that lasted for 10 seconds. And after expiring or being fully consumed, it would explode for 75% of the damage absorbed, split between all nearby enemies. This was fantastic for huge area of effect damage, as it allowed them to not only survive burst phases longer with the shield, which was somewhat of a tough spot for Demon Hunter tanks and Legion, but also deal out huge damage quickly, seeing as the entire point of Mythic Plus Dungeon was to finish the dungeon as fast as possible. The best combination of Legendaries Vengeance Demon Hunters could have was Oblivion's Embrace and Archimonde's Hatred Reborn. Or if the Demon Hunter did not have Archimonde's Hatred Reborn, they could substitute it for Rune Master's Pauldrons instead, which made Metamorphosis now also reset the remaining cooldown of all other sigils and grant them one charge of Demon Spikes. There was just no reason to ever use this one over most of the other Demon Hunter legendaries, as they were superior in nearly every way to it. And at number 3, we have Celerity of the Windrunners. This was a Marksman Hunter legendary which increased haste by 15% for 6 seconds when they used their Wind Burst. An ability tied to the Marksman Artifact weapon, which did a lot of damage and left a speed boost on the ground for the party to run through, for a 50% increased movement speed for 5 seconds. Seeing as haste was the worst stat for Marksman Hunter during Legion, and pretty much every expansion, this went from being a mediocre legendary to a must avoid. Uller's Feather Snowshoes was their best legendary, which reduced the cooldown of their main DPS cooldown, True Shot, whenever the hunter casts a damaging shot by 0.8 seconds. One second originally, before being nerfed in 7.1.5. A close second for Marksman was War Belt of the Sentinel Army, which made their multi-shot increase the damage of their next aim shot for each enemy hit by 10%, stacking to 200% max. Marksman was never really known for their strong AoE damage, and usually their strong single target damage, and this legendary made any potential AoE to allow you to do massive single target damage. Having longer uptime on their DPS cooldown or better AoE damage is just simply better in every way than extra haste, which Marksman never needed anyways. And at number 2 we have the crafted legendary called Salimbra the Knight's Dichotomy, which was an exclusive legendary for cloth wearers. This made it so whenever an enemy was in 12 yards of the player, the player would conceal themselves in shadows, which reduced their damage taken by 5% and increased their movement speed by 10%. And when there weren't any enemies around, the player would heal for 1% of their maximum health every second. Legendaries could not be used in PvP during Legion, and the damage reduction and movement speed were just not that good, especially as they only really worked in melee, making this legendary really only a typical casters don't like melee armor piece. And while the 1% heal per second was nice, it only worked at range. Meaning that it only really worked outside of combat or against ranged enemies. Which is already not super useful because of the self-healing that priests and warlocks have, only really leaving mages to get any benefit. The only decent side with this legendary was that it was good for leveling and solo content, and for said mages. Otherwise it was just a waste of materials of gold if you decided to obtain it. And at the number one spot on this list, we have March of the Legion. A Monk Legendary Ring which increased the movement speed of their Windwalker passive ability by an additional 15%. This offered no damage increases at all, but the extra movement speed was noticeable and did benefit all allies within 10 yards of the Monk, 
but dedicating a legendary slot to a ring that only increased your movement speed was usually not worth the trade-off, especially when there were legendaries like Drinking Horn Cover, which extended the duration of their main DPS burst ability, Storm Earth and Fire. And there were a lot of other, much better legendary Windwalker monks too, such as the Wind Blows, a helmet that made Strike of the Windlord, their artifact ability, have a 20% shorter cooldown and make their next blackout kick, which was the main part of the rotation, cost no chi to use as well. The Emperor's Capacitator was also one of their best single target legendaries too, as this made their crackling jade lightning increase damage by 50%, and reduces cost by 5%, stacking up to 20 times whenever the monk spent chi. And as an additional unique effect, the buff for this had no duration, much like Weakener's Loyalty, basically the same effect but for Demonology Warlock's artifact ability. This transformed the ability from one of the weakest to one of the strongest parts of the rotation. Monks having these legendaries that all fit their playstyle quite well, left this ring behind as it did nothing more than increase their movement speed by a minor amount, with its only real use being farming old world content, as when you were one-shotting everything, 15% movement speed is actually quite good.